Hello and welcome back to Trail Mix. Today I'm going to show you how to make GPX routes using GPS Track Editor that you can then download to your GPS watch. If you want to make a route and you don't want to start from scratch, you can take previous routes and other sources of files and combine them to make a new route. And today I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay, so for this demonstration I'm going to make a route around Edel in celebration of John Kelly's Pennine Way FKT this week, which finishes about there. So the first source I'm going to use is a GPX file from a race website. Race websites are a good source of files and new routes, especially in areas you haven't been to before. So what I'm going to use for this is the route of the Millstone 100. So this is their website. You go down to routes here and it shows you a map. Some websites will have a GPX link directly for people to put on their watches. A lot of them will use these external plotting sites, but quite a lot of these, if you go to the actual website and then have a look around, you'll find a download link here. So in this case, this is uh, plotterroute.com. The options are fairly straightforward. We want a GPS file, we don't want a picture. We want it in GPX format, that's important. We can give it a name. The other really important option is that we want a track, not a route. So a route is a set of waypoints, usually for, as it says, for devices that calculate their own routes between them. That's not what we want here. That's just gonna give us some points a very long way apart and not actually tell us how to get from one to the other. So we want track. And then we can click download this route and go ahead and download that. Okay, so in GPS track editor, I can then open that up and there's that GPX file and we can see that route. It's quite a long one, this one. And here's the part that goes through Edel. The next source I'm going to use is a run I've done previously. So you can go to the website or the program, whatever you use for looking at your GPS data, be it Garmin Connect, Strava or whatever. I use uh, Sport Tracks. This is a run I did in 2013 when I was actually staying at the Edel Youth Hostel here. So all of these services will have an export button and you can uh, download the GPX file here. Be aware for Strava, you can also download the GPX files from other people. This can be quite useful, especially if you're going to an area you've not been to before. One year, Georgina and I went to Madeira and actually the Salomon Pro team had been training there and we uh, went on Strava, found some of their profiles and nicked some routes to use, which was really helpful. I think that's only available in the paid version of Strava, however. So we can go ahead, download that route. I like to keep a prep folder where I keep all the parts of the route I'm going to build. So let's call this one Edale 1. And then we can go back to GPS Track Editor, open that up and load that in. Okay, so we can start to build the route now. So I'm going to want to start in Edel and I'm going to initially follow this, this race route, so the red line. What I do here is select the edit points in the top left, not the hand. And then I can click on the millstone route, which shows you the individual points. If you switch to the other one, you'll see, you see the arrows of the one selected. So I want to start here by the pub. So I right click on that point there and go restructuring and add break. And that splits it into two. So you can see now we've actually got uh, two separate sections of this GPX file. And we're going to follow that through the Pennine Way, up a booth, uh, up Jacob's Ladder, and I think about as far as just by here, by just before Edel Rocks, where the Pennine Way splits from the Edel uh, Rim Path. So let's say about here, this junction. Okay. Now I'm going to cut across to this uh, previous route I downloaded, but I don't have a file to do this part. Now, there are many different ways you can do that, but I'm going to show you three in this demonstration. This one is going around the Edel Valley Rim and through Wallpacks, and 
it's quite clear roughly which way we want to go but there are a lot of different paths here it's not clear which are the best if you've not been there before what I'm going to do for this is actually use a uh, Strava so if I go to the Strava website and go to my routes <coughs> you can click create a new route wait for it to load go down to Edale testing my geography here it's about yeah that's not bad there's Kinder Low okay so we wanted to start here's Jacob's Ladder we want to start this split here so we click there and we want to go around the edge through wall packs pim chair no stool all of that and we want to end I've missed it that's Grinslow Knoll we want to end at the top of Grinsbrook so that's about here okay and this is a lovely tool in some ways because it actually just finds the uh, most popular route if you're not familiar with this tool all of these blue kind of uh, veins if you like are actually previously loaded data up that's been uploaded to Strava and the darker ones show more popular routes so this is the Pennine Way here is very dark but uh, all over Kinder you can see some lighter routes where people have gone across the actual moorland if you're not familiar with an area you, you want to just follow the kind of major routes it's quite a good tool if you want to go exploring a bit more then there are probably other things that are better and I'll show you those later on once we've got our route and we're happy with that we can go ahead and save it and you can give it a name I'll call it wall packs because that's the bit we're going through save that to my route and then it gives you the option to export GPX also gives you a nice elevation profile too so again save that off to your computer and we can load that into GPX editor too there it is now files like this that aren't derived on some actual uh, route data from a run you've done will pop up this window and all this is saying that basically this this file has GPS data so it has longitude latitude elevation but it doesn't actually have any timestamps in it so it, it doesn't know how fast the route is this isn't really important for our purposes because we're just interested in the actual location so you can just click OK but you can effectively give it a speed which will influence the the time of the route but that's not so important for us okay so there's our route and you can see that nicely joins the first track we used to the the light blue one over here I might give that a slightly different color so I can just do that pull this down and let's go for a nice bright yellow I like to use ones that are adjacent having um, nice contrasting different colors it just makes life a bit easier so let's make that one a bright green beautiful okay so we're going to come along here come along this one and then over here when we get to Hope Cross we want to cut back up to the race route but I want to go uh, this way up that ridge towards uh, towards Windhill direction and we'll cut into this race route at, at Woolen Knoll. To do that I'm going to use my next technique which is a website I like very much called Walk Lakes and this allows you to plot routes on top of OS maps. They also have these way maps as well which are actually really nice, very clear mapping as well. But if you're used to OS maps and um, you want the detail of that then this works very well as you can see it actually changes the OS map as you zoom in and out so as you zoom out you've got the 1 to 50,000 style maps with the red paths and then as you zoom in a bit you get the 1 to 25,000 style with the green paths which probably walkers and runners are, are more used to here we can just click away to make our route it's just a straight line it's not going to follow paths or anything clever like that but if you've got a nice little bit where you want to add in some fine detail or you want to follow actual rights of way rather than what Strava thinks are rights of way then this is a nice option so we're going to go from uh, Hope Cross the five-way junction there which is here and I'm just going to click away let's move that to one side and we're going to go up the Roman road here I can zoom in and be as accurate as I want but to be honest this is quite a clear track and we are going to stop uh, about here I think somewhere so once you've got your route let's give it a name let's call this one uh, Hope Cross and then we can download the GPX file here note that you can also get a route profile on this not very interesting in this uh, example but it does work quite well so let's download that 
another file, save hope cross, OK, good, and we've got that one as well. OK, so here we see a problem. This is one fault with Walk Lakes is that, remember earlier I was talking about tracks and routes. So unfortunately it creates routes, not tracks, and GPS editor can't load routes, but there is a easy enough workaround. So I have another website, the GPS Visualizer website, which is very nice. And if you go to this website and click Convert a File, then I want to output a GPX. This is a bit strange because we're converting a GPX to a GPX, but uh, trust me, it will do, do what we need to. Oops, I need to actually choose the file first. So we wanted the Hope Cross file. And there we go, it's got that loaded. I think all the other options are fine. We can click on Convert. Okay, and then we can click this link to get our file. It gives it a random name. We can save that. I'm actually going to overwrite the Hope Cross file because we don't need that one anymore. This new one is going to be the one we use. So let's go back and try that again. So we go open track, Hope Cross, choose our speed, and OK, it's loaded this time. So you can see I didn't go quite far enough, but we can tidy that up later easily enough. OK, so we've got a lot of coloured lines. So I'm going to rejoin this route purple route here and then follow this back. What it's worth doing now probably is clearing off some of the things that we don't want to use because at the moment it's a bit overwhelming. So we know for instance here this purple one we don't need 152 kilometers of it thankfully we're going to stop here so let's break that one there and all of that purple bit that's going all the way up there to Crowden we don't need that so you just click on that section and press delete and that will get rid of it. You can also just untick to hide things as well but sometimes deleting them is clearer. Now this red one we do want this section here back. We're going to take that as far as Hollins Cross I think so let's do that there. Okay so we've got a huge green section here we're not really interested in. Let's get rid of that and then we've got the early part of the race here as well. And I've decided I don't need this section either, so we can go ahead and delete that. We can use this route to come back. So now we're going to tidy up the previous route we used. So we're going to take that and get rid of this section here. Because we're going this way, so we don't need that. Okay, that brownie section. Yep, get rid of that. We definitely don't need this, all of this big purple section either, but we do want a bit of it. So let's break at Hollins Cross there. Okay. And then, yeah, I think we can get rid of that as well. And there's one last bit. We've got a bit of a tail here, so we need to trim that. Okay, so we've got something that's starting to look like a root now. I'm just going to change some of the colours again to make them a bit more distinctive. That green as well. Let's put that to a nice blue. What I like to do at this point is actually save off these as new files. The reason I do that is we've got some merge bits here. So we've got two sections from this file, we've got two from this file, and it can get confusing, especially if they're not concurrent. So what I'm going to do is take them in order and save them off into my prep area and just call them one, two, three, and so on. So that's one, two, and six. And now I've got those, I can get rid of all of these. And it asks you if you want to save the bits. I don't want to save that because that's actually a race route. I might use that again for something else. So I'll say no. So I've got my six parts. First thing some of you will have noticed is that some of them are going the wrong way. So initially we're going in this clockwise direction here. And then I think number two, the Woolpax one, we made that, so that's going the right way. But this number three is actually going the wrong way. So the easy fix on that, we just right click and press reverse. Number four looks good. Number five looks good. 
number six also going the wrong way so we need to reverse that one as well. Next comes the joining process and this is the most complicated part. What we need to do is make sure that all these sections are actually in the right time order. So as I said GPS files have a time associated with them as well as a position and if we just try to merge these it won't know which order to merge them in and you'll get that one joining across to there and then back to here and it's a right mess. So what we do is click on each file in turn so we'll start with one and click on the, the file actually not the section of the file and we go to track time and then shift so what I need to do is make sure that this is the first one in time so the oldest if you like the way I tend to do this is just just put them in a different month so 2020 okay that's last year I'll put this one in January okay I'll put this one in February no, 2020, not 2021. And June. Okay, once I've done that, I can highlight all of them right click and choose merge. So what this does is make a new GPX file with all the sections still in it. So they are still separate sections but they're now in one file so that's the first step of the process. Once I've done that I can go ahead and hide all these to avoid confusion. Now I need to choose the sections of the file one by one right click again this time go to join and now that's actually turned it into a single GPS track what I tend to do here is click save as again because you've got all this kind of dead structure you don't really need and this is actually going to be our final route so let's call that our route okay so now we've done that we've got our route it's clearly joined in the right order we haven't got any lines going all over the place we can go and get rid of all of this don't need it anymore so the last thing is to tidy up our route a bit so we notice for instance over here that I overshot when I was making my route and actually I think I wanted to go this way no problem GPS track editor can edit files as well as just joining them and looking at them so it's easy you can just grab points and move them around like this If you want to put in a new point, all you have to do is just cl left click somewhere in the middle of a section and it will create a new point which makes it quite easy to follow curves. You just click and drag and obviously you can go and be as accurate as you want to. These OpenStreetMap maps tend to be pretty accurate so you can go in and, and follow it very closely if it's a tricky section. So we can go around and tidy up the route and add as much as we want. I think here we didn't have a very good join so that you can see it's straight lined a little bit so we can go and go in and tweak that a bit. Also if you've had your GPS watch has had a bad day and you've got a bit of an offset you can go in and just adjust some points. To be honest when you're following a road it's going to be fairly clear cut anyway. So anywhere where there were gaps between the sections they're going to be joined by a straight line and the obvious one is here. So here I ended one path here and I started the other here. So it's quite nice that they didn't have to exactly join together. I just end up with a straight line in between, but that's now trivial. Rather than going and making another route in Walk Lakes or Strava, it's just quicker just to do it manually here and just get it spot on, especially if it's somewhere where you're pretty sure you know where you're going anyway, then just to get your distance right and you can know how far you're gonna run beforehand so I'm just going to do this very roughly quickly but you can spend more time on it if you want to and that looks fairly tidy so we're starting and ending in Edel just go around and check for any bits that don't look quite right any bits especially if you're using previous routes where you went the wrong way and double back there we go there's a good one okay so this is a good example here where clearly I went slightly the wrong way changed my mind and went back 
and we can tidy this up so we don't go and do the same thing again so all we need to do is just delete points and in GPS editor you just do that by selecting the point and pressing delete and press delete key repeatedly will cause the points to be removed you can see it leaves these black lines and actually you can restore the points afterwards if you have made a mistake which is quite nice so we'll go along again, anything else we don't like the look of, looks pretty good to me. It's following the paths on the ground, which is always a good sign. I think I'm fairly happy with that. So this is quite a nice way of checking your route length before you go out and find actually it's an awful lot longer than you thought it was. I've got 26.4 kilometers here, in my experience that's pretty accurate and definitely good enough to say, okay, I roughly know how long this run's going to be and not head off on anything that you find it ends up being a lot longer than you're expecting. You can save save the route again and then we've got that file in our directory and then we can put that onto our watch depending on your watch either upload it to Garmin Connect or put it on the watch directly via USB cable however you normally do it. Go ahead and enjoy your route. Thanks for watching.